Gary, Joe, it's great to have you both on Investor Stream to discuss Sagasco's acquisition of the very large and highly prospective portfolio of exploration and development assets in the Philippines, which holds six known oil discoveries. Joe, I'd like to start with you if I can. Could you just talk us through your experience operating in the Philippines and also provide an overview of the assets and indeed the operating environment there? Yeah, sure. So, hi, Alex. Very happy to be here. It's my first interview with Sagasco, so it's going to be fun. It's a very big day for Sagasco today. Um, You might say I've been working on this acquisition since 2005. Uh, I joined Neato Petroleum, in fact, back then when it was in its infancy. It was an ASX listed company at the time with a single service contract in the Philippines, and it wasn't worth much more than $1 million. Um, I left Neato in 2011 uh, as Deputy Managing Director after it had grown to more than $300 million. Um, and over that time, we'd acquired a number of service contracts. We'd brought an oil field into development. Uh, we'd run seismic programs and completed a drilling program making two discoveries. Um, so we had a pretty successful, or I had a pretty successful time um, in my time in the Philippines back then. Um, I spent almost seven years focusing there and at times living there. Um, so I know the people, I know the local industry, and perhaps most importantly, I know the rocks uh, in the Palawan Basin. And I bring a few lessons learnt uh, along the way with me as well. Um, so I'm excited now that Sagasco is, is uh, heading, heading uh, back into the Philippines and we've got an excellent portfolio now for growth um, there. The Palawan Basin is one of the last underexplored proven oil and gas basins in the world and Sagasco now has what, almost one and a half million hectare footprint over the majority of it. So we've got four service contracts in total, two of which we operate. Um, and within that acreage, there are, as you said, there are six existing oil discoveries with development potential, including a shut-in oil field um, and exploration acreage, which has just fabulous prospectivity. Um, so a bit of background on the Philippines as a, as a country. It, it's very oil and gas friendly. Uh, the oil and gas fiscal terms are the, are the best in Asia. It's got 70% cost recovery and up to 44% of the profit oil coming back to the contractor as well. Um, and they're very energy hungry. They've got a uh, obviously a developing economy, a fast growing population. Um, at the moment, almost a quarter of the energy mix is natural gas. Uh, and all of that at the moment is supplied by the Malampaya gas field in the Palawan Basin. We don't own an interest in Malampaya, but we do have the acreage on either side. Um, now, what's really interesting about this is that Malampaya is currently on decline. Uh, and it's expected to reach the end of its life in 2024. So that all adds up to a great opportunity for any other gas discovered in the Palawan Basin. Uh, There's ready-made infrastructure there which could transport gas right to the heart of the Philippines. Um, And that's before we start talking about the oil. Alex, I think if I could just add there um, uh, that if anyone's interested in, you know, sort of what sort of a regime that the Department of Energy in Philippines is is uh, looking for, you know, I suggest you go and have they go and have a look at the upstream oil and gas roadmap that was published in 2017, and you can see uh, the very aggressive uh, growth uh, in the oil and gas business and upstream business that the Department of Energy is. Philippines would like to see, uh, and so I think that that sends a strong message. Uh, if you look at the strategies, it's all about encouraging people like us uh, to get out there and make it happen. And uh, Neo has a great track record of making it happen. Uh, we wish and we we plan to continue that track record. Thanks for that, Gary. Now, Joe, could you just talk us through your development strategy for these assets? And given their size, will you bring in partners? And I guess an obvious question that shareholders would probably want to know is, how did you secure the assets so cheaply? Yeah, so good question. So with Bang Chuck's decision that these assets were non-core to uh, their business, we were really fortunate to be able to move very quickly to secure them with, as you know, a negligible impact to our cash position. Um, there are liabilities associated with three shut-in wells at Westland and Packin, which come with the package. Uh, but Westland and Packin is also a significant opportunity, which is very exciting, and we'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. 
Um, in respect of partnering, no decisions have been made uh, at this time, but we, we do have large interests across the portfolio. Uh, so it, does, it gives us plenty of room to bring in partners if that makes sense for funding the growth uh, of these assets. So we'll, we'll contemplate that as we move forward. Um, we do already, of course, have some excellent joint venture partners on these service contracts, which I'm, I'm very familiar with, uh, including the Philippine National Oil Company and the operator of SC14 and SC6 uh, filler drill, who's very well respected in the country as well. Um, I'm very, and I'm really looking forward to, to working with all of our partners on this as we go forward. Um, so in terms of the forward plan, there's a lot for us to look at now. Uh, we've got, as you mentioned, we've got six oil pools, uh, Nido 1X1, Tindalo, Yakal, Westland, Apac and B wells, all intersected oil columns. Uh, there's a Cadlau oil field which has re redevelopment potential. Uh, and Westland and Pack and A is a, is a very interesting oil field. It produced uh, eight and a half million barrels uh, from three wells back in the 1990s. Uh, and it was shut in due to, low, due to the low oil prices at that time, uh, as well as a, an increasing water cut through an FPSO that was not really designed to handle a lot of water. Um, so there's a, there's a real opportunity there to, to get back in there and redevelop that field. Um, the first thing we need to do uh, as Sagasco is to assess the discovered resources across these six oil pools and evaluate potential development options needed to bring them into production. Um, so coincident with that, we'll also be looking at what we can do to mature the exploration portfolio. Um, NEDO's all done some really great historical work here and, and they've left us with a, just a magnificent suite of uh, 2D and 3D seismic. Uh, it's worth some tens of millions of, of dollars, the seismic package as it, as it was acquired um, and, a, and a portfolio of prospects that are, that are very interesting. So we'll be reviewing these in detail as well and determining our next steps uh, for the exploration portfolio and perhaps there might even be some synergies with a development program. Um, so we'll update shareholders, of course, on our assessment of the prospective and contingent resources uh, through the existing portfolio. Thanks, Joe. Now, Gary, turning to you, this is another step in Sagasco diversifying its asset base and entering a new market outside of North America. Can you talk us through Sagasco's overall growth strategy in light of this acquisition? Sure, Alex. Yeah. Um, it's been very simple, our strategy. You, know, you look for um, undervalued assets uh, in underexplored areas and uh, adjacent to uh, strong uh, markets for oil and gas. And, uh, and, you know, and gas you know, is not you know, just uh, methane-related uh, hydrocarbon gases, but you know, we're also uh, always on the lookout for, for helium and hydrogen uh, as uh, supplements to, to what we're doing there. Um, you know, we're developing a, a conveyor belt of, of opportunities here. Um, uh, what we're looking for you know, are opportunities that are low in upfront cap capital needs. So opportunities that we can uh, develop uh, with a low cost upfront uh, development plan. Uh, onshore, that's pretty easy uh, around infrastructure, which, which is why, where Canada and, and California fit into the equation very, very well, uh, because we've got such uh, extensive uh, infrastructure uh, that uh, we can utilize. Uh, offshore, obviously, it's a little more um, Complicated, but it, but it really simple overall. You, you know, you, you you just need to approach it with a different approach of of getting early production uh, to help you bootstrap your your uh, uh, production up you know, to create greater value for the shareholders. Um, I, I think about it sometimes as a bit of a self-sourcing pudding. Uh, you know, you, you, you're producing to add capital, cash flow to then grow the business to explore and, and develop uh, undeveloped uh, areas of, of fields uh, and undeveloped uh, discoveries, you know, to get more cash flow to grow further and, and enhance the value of, of the company for the shareholders because after, after all, that's what we're here for. Uh, so, th so that's that's the plan, and and this this asset fits it perfectly. 
So Gary, in terms of Borba and the growth of your California natural gas business, what's the focus right now for bringing Borba online and growing production there? And secondly, how's production tracking in Canada? Yes, um, Borba, obviously very excited about um, having Borba and getting Borba online because it, it is significant cash flow for the company. Uh, we're working closely with the pipeline companies uh, at the moment to find uh, the, the their preferred route that fits with our overall strategy. Um, obviously, we like Putting, if we're going to put any new pipeline in the ground, we want to uh, put it you know, through areas where we think are prospective for future drilling. Uh, so we're, we're working hard on that. Uh, the guys on the ground are, are, are working on that every day. Um, now, in, in can- and so we will, that that'll lead to increased production in, in California. We're also looking at all the other opportunities in the portfolio you know, in California to increase our production you know, through you know, well work and and, uh, and also exploration opportunities that uh, a bulb are lookalike. So there's a lot, a lot of work going on uh, as we speak. And uh, we have some new data sets that uh, we're bringing to the table to assess uh, where we go forward. In Canada, yeah, production's coming along well. It's, um, it's ahead of... Uh, uh, prognosis uh, when we uh, acquired the assets, uh, the assets are well on their way to paying out, um, and you know the, the high oil prices and gas prices that we've seen in in California and ca- Canada, are obviously helping that. Um, and, and everyone knows I'm a, an oil and gas bull and prices, so I, we're, we're looking forward to more of that into the future. So everything's coming along well. Um, obviously, we'll have a more detailed report out uh, in in the near future. Uh, particularly with the quarterly due. And just finally, Gary, the chairman in your announcement has flagged plenty of news flow to come. What should we expect next by way of an update as you advance these assets in the Philippines? Well, I think, you know, as Joe referred to, we want to get a, an updated assessment out of the resources. Um, that There are prospective resources you know, in, in the basin, large prospective resources, and uh, and there are contingent resources because we've got the the discoveries. So we want to get a third party to have a look at those and update those. Those who are impatient and and uh, in the shareholder base, so who we want to get a feel for that, just go back and have a look at the NEDO releases. Uh, there's not not going to be a whole whole lot different uh, in in terms of that, other than the impact on oil and gas prices, you know, in, into those uh, uh, contingent resources or not a big impact because you know that, that, that to, there'd be reserves if we bring those to, to play. Um, so so that'll be the first thing. I think we also you know we'll, we'll sit down and make plans now. As, as Joe said, we've done this very quickly uh, because we saw it as a great opportunity. We'll sit down and now make our plans for you know how quickly we can get uh, you know equipment into the area, drilling rigs, etc., uh, and uh, and get get active in uh, developing these uh, resources and and contingent resources that are uh, and discoveries that are already there so uh, i expect that uh, we'll we'll have lots of news coming forward from canada california and from from the philippines and uh, and we're always on the outlook for more uh, yeah, it, 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 as long as they, they're, they're undervalued up front and, and we see the value that we can bring to it we'll, we'll, we'll get on with it so that's where we're at, Alex. Fantastic. Gary, Joe, really appreciate you joining me today to discuss this acquisition. And uh, we'll certainly be keeping an eye on how things progress over the next few months. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Thanks, Alex. Alex.